Gotta press that button. Oh my god. Oh my car. Oh my car. I gotta I gotta adjust the mic a little. We should be talking into it like this. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh. <laughs> oh my god. I don't even know where to start. I mean, I guess, okay, we should start with Cars 1, right? That would be the logical uh, choice. Yeah. All right. So, Cars 3 is coming out. Uh, not, well, by the time I upload this, next weekend. Yep. So, Cars 3 is coming out next weekend. On the 20th. So, Shauna and I thought it would be a good idea to, like, have a retrospect on the other Cars films, because it's been a long time since either of us had seen one, and I've never seen Cars 2. And I saw it once in theaters, so it's been a while. <laughs> so, let's talk about Cars 1. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, Cars 1. Cars 1. When things weren't quite as shitty. Okay, I can do this. I, I took some notes. Um, so, so, let, okay, C -c cars. Cars. I can't right now. We okay. just finished Cars 2. I can't not. <laughs> I just, ah. You're peaking the audio. It's okay. Hold on. <laughs> Here. It's not okay. It's all garbage. Collect, <laughs> Collect, your... Collect yourself. You take over. You talk about cars I will. for a little bit. I gotta just think. Ow, I really hurt myself. <laughs> With that fake slap. Ow. Sorry, honey. <laughs> I, I hit my ring. Here, I'll just... Mm, there no, you go. You're better. That hand was not this oh. one. Mm, there you go. You're better. <laughs> this is going great. Yeah. Okay. Cars 1 came out really long time ago. After The Incredibles. After The Incredibles. God. Yeah, I know. Wow. What a... Okay. Uh-huh. Pixar decided that they wanted to do a movie about things that weren't good ideas. Yep. So they thought, let's do merchandising. Let's do the most inanely stupid thing that all boys love. Mm hmm. Cars. Yep. And so they did a movie where there are living cars. And there's NASCAR. Yep. The main character. Is a NASCAR car. He just is a NASCAR. He's a NASCAR. So, that's always been the thing I've heard about this franchise, is that it was like, it's only there to sell toys. And I, I understood that, but Cars 1, at least, felt like at least somebody cared about the movie. Like, at least one person was like, you know what, I kind of like this concept. I'm going to at least put a little bit of effort into this. Yeah. And after re-watching it, I feel a little less like that, but but I still feel that. Like, I still feel like I feel somebody like some cared. some people cared about it. They were Pixar. They can do no wrong. Right. So they did Cars. And it wasn't terribly great. Yeah. Um, for those unaware, Lightning McQueen is the main character. He's, you don't know the plot of if Cars. If you somehow don't know. I, he's is there ups. a soul out there who's not seen Cars? Probably. I mean, I guess, but... Uh. He's an upstart racer um, who's going to win out of nowhere. Uh... There is a two-dimensional villain that's in the movie for, like, three seconds. Yeah, Chick Hicks. God, is that his name? Yeah. Fuck. Chick Hicks. Because and this movie needs to constantly remind you that it's, it's about country bumpkins. And they're 
port. And there's... <laughs> and the king, who is such a flat, boring character that you forget he's in the movie until you watch it. Generic, nice country guy. Who's won a lot of races and is retiring. Yeah. So and they tie. Like, All yeah. three of them tie. Yeah. So... Because uh, McQueen is a, is a jerk and he's mean to his crew and he... Nobody likes him. And nobody likes him and he doesn't go into a pit stop so his tires bust and contrived bullshit reasons, they all tie. Yep. So there's going to be another race, which happens at the end of the film, of course, where... Where they all race again. But of course, by the end of the film, McQueen has been stuck in Radiator Springs and he's learned the magic of friendship. And, and country land is great. And learned how to live off the land. <laughs> or something. And I don't so, know, his character change happens like that for we'll, no we'll, reason. We'll get into that. Um, but this anyway, might be a long one. Yeah, this will probably be a long one. Because... Ooh. Even though this is the first time I've seen Cars 2, we're going to tackle these these movie reviews of stuff that that we've seen before more uh, thoroughly. So they're going to be longer. <laughs> they're not just first thoughts. Yeah. Anyway, though, back on focus. Um, you know, McQueen's learned the magic of friendship, and uh, he had his mentor, Doc, and he crashed at whatever point, and it was sad, and... The queen saves the king, and he ends up coming third in this race because, yeah, uh, McQueen learns a lesson and becomes a better person. <sighs> this comes about because he's an asshole and then gets lost in the country of... Do they even say what state it is? Like no, Nevada I mean, or something? it takes place, like, out in the desert, and it's on Route 66, so... Nevada or something? Or Nevada. Nevada. <laughs> Whatever. Who cares? Uh-huh. Radiator Springs is a town full of token trope characters to sell toys that have no reason for existing in this town. Yeah, it's all... It's <laughs> all... Oh, God. Okay. Oh, God. I just I can't. <laughs> My brain can't function after watching Cars 2. A new highway was built next to Route 66, so no one takes Route 66 because it's a windy-ass terrible road in the middle of fucking nowhere, mm -hmm. and people got shit to do, so they got places to go. Yeah. So this town is failing, and there's like seven, eight people left in it, and they're all boring-ass... Token one, characters. Token one-dimensional characters. You got the two Italian guys that are obsessed with Ferraris. You got the Mexican guy who's all about the spray paints. You got his wife, the black chick who runs the diner. Um, uh, you got the crusty old uh, army guy and the hippie. The, the hippie who are, like, gay roommates or something. Maybe. It's really strange. Uh, you got the large, probably uh, mentally challenged fire truck. I mean, that's reading a little into it, but sure. Maybe, I don't know, he definitely seems a little slower than the other characters. And then crazy old lady. The crazy Lizzie. old lady who is the wife of the founder of this town, who is dead. Uh -huh. Also, then, cars can die. Yeah, somehow. <laughs> um, and then uh, Doc. Mater. And Doc. Doc Mater and the cop, who is the cop. Oh, yeah, and the cop. Who is that's... a lazy country cop. That, that That's that's his character. I mean, at least he never makes a donut joke or anything like that, because this universe doesn't have donuts. Although, not that this universe follows any sort of rules. Of, of logic. What, of or... what can and cannot be made a joke for the sake of Just being bringing internal logic into this universe. Because this, this universe has zero logic to it one minute there will like everything has to be a car okay but not everything is a car like there are times where it's like pixar wants to throw in a joke about like their own like the for the birds short and like you see the birds go by and it's like they're um, birds they're just birds they're just and then birds. there's other times where where like they're showing 
the skyline and there are birds flying around. And you're like, those are just birds. Those are just birds. And yet you showed that bugs are cars. Are cars. And this goes into the sequel, but the sequel shows that there are pigeon planes. Yeah, so birds are now suddenly cars, or not cars, but planes. And cows are tractors, and a bull was a combine. Yeah. There's no logic. Which also begs to ask, what do cars have use for a cows or tractors? Either or. And wheat? What do cars need wheat for? Also, how do cars do anything? They have wheels. How do they build these houses? Why is there fences? Why are there houses? Hold on, hold on. As we were watching the second film, Uh I had a theory pop into my head. This is going to be like a crackpot game or film theory type thing. Okay. Um, The cars are all slave owners. The only creatures in this universe that have opposable limbs of any sort Mm -hmm. are the, like, the little lift truck things the forklifts the forklifts it's like is there some sort of like slavery thing going on here that they don't talk about yeah this is definitely a a crackpot film theory (laughs) oh yeah but it's like they're the only ones that can do anything i mean also do people own boats like other people oh yeah that's true because that's going into cars 2 territory (laughs) but it's just like um is there just like this point, this movie raises so like this universe raises so many questions while you're watching it, and also to anyone out there who's like, oh, you're just thinking about the movie too hard. No, no, there's this thing called suspension of disbelief, and it's very important that when you have a film universe, you don't let your audience like start to question it. Start to question it. But the thing is with cars is you can't help but question it. it Every single turn. It's just like, how would any of this happen? Like, you bring why? something else up and you're just confused. You're like, wait, why does this function like this? But that... So they have mouths with, like, humanoid teeth and body, but when you open their head, it's just an engine? Where does the one stop and where does the other begin? Why mm. do they have mouths? Also... How do cars become? Yeah. Do why do why do why do cars have families? Why do cars have families? Because there's a throwaway line in the first one where the big red Mac Mac uh, McQueen's like semi friend. He says, "Thank the manufacturer." Like, as in, as in, oh, like, thank, thank God, God or something. Yeah. But he says, thank the manufacturer, and I only just, like, I I was the one who brought up that line to mm-hmm. you. I was like, wait a second, did he just say thank the manufacturer? And so we paused the movie, and we're like... Is, is manufacturer what is, God? What does that mean? Like, is, is there a manufacturing plant that makes all the cars? The second movie universe? actually brings up another line. Like, when they're trying to figure out who the bad guy is, because it's a spy movie for some reason. We'll get to it later. But they're like, they only made, like, Sally, not Sally, sequel car two, whatever her name is. Uh, Holly Shiftwell. Yeah, her generic girl character. Uh-huh. Um, Sally 2.0. Sally 2.0. Um, says something along the lines of, they only made car... They only made this model from this year to this year. So obviously cars are only being... Are being made... Mm Mm-hmm. Assumed, like, by this manufacturer. Is this manufacturing company run by cars? Or is it some other creature that we don't know about? Could it be humans? Who knows? It's... This rabbit hole is too deep, Pixar. It doesn't work. I just okay. Let's let's go to my notes here because I wrote some notes. Go for to cars. the notes. Um, my first note was suspension of disbelief, and we talked about that for for quite a while. We might go back to that because it's it's like this films these films biggest problems. Mm-hmm. And like you've heard everybody talk about it, but it's it's seriously a huge problem. Um, my second note is McQueen's character arc. 
McQueen's character arc, when I first watched this as a kid, I didn't have any problems with it. So it's written well enough. Like, like mm-hmm. it's good enough that most people probably aren't going to, like, question it. But watching this again now, I'm looking at it, and it's just, like, McQueen's character turns on a dime. And then he's a different character for the rest of the film. Yeah. It's like... The first half of the film, he's an asshole, 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 he's an asshole. Mater, you wanna... Mater comes up and like, you wanna go cow tipping? And then he's a nice character. Yeah, and then he's a nice guy for the rest of the movie. That That's the turning point. A slightly bewildered nice guy. Like, he, he like he's slightly bewildered at everything going on around him. But he's not an asshole. Yeah. Which was his only character trait, so we had no idea what he actually was like when he's not an asshole. And yet again, this just brings up more questions. Like, how old is McQueen? Was he just born the other day? What did he do before he was a race car? Because this is the first season he's been racing. Yeah, this is What does a race car do before he's a race car? Yeah, it's like, so wait, has he just been a race, like... A race car his whole life? How long has his life been? Like, at the, at the beginning of the movie, the Rusty's guys were like, oh, or McQueen was like, er, they gave somebody, me my big somebody. break. Yeah, it's like they gave McQueen his big break. So that just leads the audience to think, so wait, what did McQueen do before he was a race car? Did he... But he, he was built How to be a race car. You can't... Work? Can you just change what kind of car you are and if that's true why doesn't people why don't people change what kind of car they are all the time see now originally this question was answered in an earlier draft of the movie okay have you ever seen the deleted scenes for cars no all right there is a deleted scene for cars where part of mcqueen's sentence is when he gets to radiator springs and he's after he's fucked up the road and everything Mm mm-hmm McQueen has a dream sequence that they take his engine out and put his engine inside Bessie, the road fixing thing. Hmm. And then, uh, they then also in the dream, Mater's engine gets put into McQueen's body. And Mater oh. is running around in, in McQueen's body. And I guess Pixar decided that that was just like creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, is understandable, so they decided to cut it. Uh, but... So they didn't so, like the whole ghost in the shell uh, yeah, concept of... Yeah, exactly. Your brain is in like this brain case, and you can just stick that in anybody, and you're good to go, 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 go. Right, but had they kept that in the movie, that would have kind of answered... Part some, of it. Some questions, like, like, okay, so McQueen... Has could have been any different car, but they put him inside a race car. It, it now whatever I mean, is very confusing. Uh, Anyways, Amy. Uh, <sighs> Let's keep moving. Uh, We're my next, be my next note: contrived segues to progress the plot. Yep. These happen at every turn. Every turn where it's like, okay, we really need the plot to move forward. How are we going to get this to happen? Oh, I know. Extremely contrived segue. Like McQueen being angry, so he kicks a can, and the can happens to go into Doc's garage and happens to knock something over. So McQueen goes to... Snoop's like an sn- asshole. Yeah, goes to snoop around in Doc's stuff so that he can find out the Doc was the Hudson Hornet. Or or the, the cop, m- for some reason, is taking the night off and needs Mater to watch McQueen, which is the only reason that they go cow tipping at all. Yeah, so it's that like, McQueen is can, less of an asshole. Yeah, but there was zero reason given for why the cop car would not be doing his job which is his like, only I swear they actually did give a reason but I cannot no, remember they it. did not they did not he's like I can't do it tonight I need you to watch him just something <laughs> as blatantly 
I'm not going to answer this question because it's too stupid to try to think about. Don't worry about it. But we need Mater and McQueen to become friends, so... For some reason. So I'm... Because I they have do it. no chemistry. Yeah. There's... God, there's no reason for McQueen to like Mater. It's like one of the most unbelievable friendships ever. Yeah. And it just gets even harder to believe in the God, when Mater is like... Oh, God. Well, when Mater is like, I knew I made a good choice. In what? My best friend. I'm like, fucking... What the hell? How have you existed this long and not made a friend to this point? Why is this person your best friend? It's stupid. It's just so stupid. Oh, okay. Moving on down the list. Tokenism. We kind of talked about that. I don't think it really needs to be addressed anymore. But everybody in this movie is a freaking token character with no other character traits other than the fact that they are a token whatever. Mm Mm-hmm. And that includes the main characters like McQueen and Mater Mater and all that business. Uh, Okay, my next note, huge lack of female characters. And I was actually thinking about this one a little bit more. I mean, probably for marketing reasons alone, but why didn't Pixar take a chance to make like 90% of the cast here female? Considering most everybody out there refers to cars as girls. Yeah. Like, like that's dumb. It's dumb that people do that, but like it's true. And She's it would have been car. Yeah, listen to her purr. Listen to her purr. But I mean, like that would have been <laughs> a funny enough twist. Mm-hmm. And to like just have no comment on it. Just have the majority of all characters girls. Also, I don't know if you noticed this, but neither in the first or second movie, any of the racers are girls. Are girls. Mm-hmm. Not a one. Not a one. Granted, this film is like 95% dudes. Yeah. Both of these films it's, are 95% it's pretty outlandish. dudes. And female characters in these movies are one note not represented well i mean nobody is represented well but no <sighs> it's like let's see important female characters in the first movie sally sally who is girl girl that and her, is her motivations make zero sense like it- i was a lawyer in los angeles and it just got too busy for me so i just Drove away from it all and then got stuck out here. And now I love the country. And now I just love it out here. God. That is her character. And the fact that McQueen is also like, man, yeah. Oh, city life. Oh, it's so, like, God. Like, why do both? Why? It just. It's a. Uh, dumb it's someone message. who lives out in the country. I'm just like. Ugh! Gross! Stop! Please! No! Stop romanticizing the country so much. I feel gross. It's a petty, terrible region of the country. (laughs) Gah! (laughs) But, but Sally's like, how she likes McQueen. It's as contrived as, like, Mater and McQueen being best friends. Again, there's no reason. He's an asshole all the time. There's no reason for her to start liking him. Yeah. Because she just starts liking him for no reason. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, he's fixing the road. That he fucked up himself. Yeah. Wow, he did a nice job. Good. (laughs) Good. He did what he's... You don't have to date him. (laughs) Good. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Yeah. That is not a good enough oh, reason for him buying, to be rewarded. He's buying stuff from all the people's shops. He only did that because he wanted to prove Doc wrong. Like, he's still doing it for a selfish reason. <laughs> yeah, he's only, like, helping everyone to rub it in Doc's face. It's like, no, I'm better than you. I actually do care because you said I don't. Mm-hmm. So I'm showing that I don't care, that I do care, that I don't care. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's really stupid. 
There's like, there's no reason for any of these characters to be friends. At all. Except for like, the, the military guy and the hippie. Just because it is kind of an amusing, like, back and forth. All of like, three lines they get. Yeah. Like, I don't see the real, I don't see anything working between any of the other characters. I mean, Luigi and Guido probably work off of each other pretty well. Like, yeah. Like, I, I have no complaints about it. That's other because than they're them just being, like, token because Italian guys. They're actually established to be friends that moved here together. Mm-hmm. I guess, are they gay too? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm reading too much into this. But I mean, they're. <sighs> Does it matter? It's just kind of like a worse version of, um. Uh. Tony. Tony's restaurant in Lady and the Tramp. Mm-hmm. I think th- I want to say their names are are literally like Tony and Antonio. <laughs> I could be completely wrong. I don't remember. I don't know. I. It's been a very long time since I've seen that one. But anyway. Um. But Tokenism. the other the other female characters in the movie. There's the twins who aren't even a character. Aren't yeah. It's like they're just objects. They're objects of victory and desire. Yeah. For that's their purpose. There's Flo, who has like one maybe line. F- three lines. Maybe three lines. And one of them is essentially, ah, oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah. She didn't say that specifically, but it was that tone and that kind of thing. Yeah. And then probably my favorite out of the female characters, Lizzie. The old lady? Yeah, the old lady. The yeah, old cause, lady car. Because that character doesn't matter that she's male or female. She's just a crotchety old lady that is... She's not crotchety. She's, she's not crotchety. fun. She's just like an old a lady crazy that's... old lady. Like, yeah, losing her mind. Yeah. It's like... Then why'd you bring him up, you big lip? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> You better stop talking to yourself. People will think, think you're crazy. crazy. Oh, thanks for the advice. I wasn't talking, talking to you. you. <laughs> like, she probably has some of the best lines in the first movie. Which is sad, because she's just... She doesn't have very many lines. And she's just a random background character. Yeah. Why aren't some of the best lines coming from the main characters? Yeah. <sighs> okay. Um... Oh, we kind of covered these already. My next three notes are Sally sucks, Mater <laughs> sucks, and then Doc is cool. We haven't talked about Doc. I like Doc. Yeah, Doc's Doc probably, is probably like my favorite actual character and actually probably has like the most character yeah. development. I, <laughs> not really, but not like... Not development, but like reveal. Yeah. Like, like he actually kind of has secrets mm-hmm. and... He does some really stupid things, which I can forgive because he's still the best character in the movie. Yeah. It's like, I want McQueen out of my town. Why? And then we find out the reason why, and it's a cool, good reason. It's sad, and it's like, okay. I'm a bitter old man that (laughs) used to be a race car driver, too. Race Race car car driver. A race car car. And now I'm just... Now I'm a- just imagining cars inside other cars, driving them around. No. <laughs> but it's like... It was, uh, but it's like, darn it, I'm not a race car anymore. Instead, I'm just both a doctor and a judge. Yeah. Fuck me. <laughs> My life is so hard. In many ways, the first movie is more Doc's story than it's McQueen's story. Mm-hmm. And and he was definitely the biggest part of the reason why I thought the movie was okay as a kid. And, like, why I would defend it to people. I'm like, no, Cars is, Cars is okay. It's got Doc. Doc is cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's really... It doesn't excuse the rest of mm-hmm. the shitty movie. But if there's one thing I don't really have a problem with, it's Doc. Yeah. Even with his flaws. Yeah. And it's really sweet. Like, I... I do really like the end, how, you know, the Radiator Spring cast shows up for McQueen's race, and Doc sees the king get crashed, 
get mm-hmm. get crunched. <laughs> and and then McQueen helps him across the finish line. Like that is like this movie was a disaster, but like that's probably about as solid of an emotional ending as they could have gotten there. Yeah. It's like, uh, there, that's, uh, that's about all you're going to get out of this movie. Yeah. Uh, my next note is all caps, nothing in this universe makes sense, which we've already talked about. A lot. A lot. Um, oh yeah, and then I wrote down some examples here, like, everything is car-centric, but... Like mountains and bugs, and I noticed the first time we were watching car or we were watching cars again. Um, I noticed there are tire tracks in the sky. Yeah, the clouds are tire tracks uh-huh. sometimes. Sometimes. And then like all the random like rocks and canyons and everything are just giant cars. Car shapes, yeah. For reasons. For reasons. Because I, I don't know. I don't. I can't even. Ex- People put. They put too much effort into the creative design of the world and not enough into like how the logical design of the, the world. The logical design of the world and that and the two are just like fighting each other and just like. Because we got just a bunch of human buildings, mm-hmm. with car doors on them, all single story and stuff. And if things have to go up, it's just a ramp. I'm honestly curious why the buildings are built like these buildings at all. If you're it's like all cars, you'd think you'd build... You'd build, like, huge parking lots and huge, like, low buildings. Yeah. But these aren't huge low buildings. They're tall, cramped little buildings mm-hmm. that the cars, like, have to, like, really... S- maneuver around. <laughs> turn around in a lot to get around or it. Or even if, like, they're... It's like, why are cities built like real cities? This is more so getting into the sequel Mm -hmm. than the first one. But why is it built like that? Why is it not built more like multi-tiered freeway? Just that's the whole city. Just it's a city that is 17 floors thick of just road that goes up and down. You could have done so many creative things with this. Like, how would cars build this universe? But you didn't. You're just like, it's our world, but they're all cars. Thanks, Pixar. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it doesn't make sense. Um, and then I also have, why does Doc have binders? Because you yeah. noticed he had binders yeah, he has in his garage. binders and just actual wrenches. Yeah, he, just regular old human things. It's like... These don't work in Doc, this Doc, how are you supposed to use this? No one has hands. And yet again, how is this stuff made? <laughs> It's like, again, it has to be the forklifts. They're the only ones that can do it. I don't even know how the forklifts do it. They're the only ones that have the possibility of being able to do it. And even, yeah, it's a stretch still, but God, it, uh. uh Oh, here's my next note. What does being cars have to do with the message of the movie? Answer, nothing. Wouldn't the story be the exact same if they changed everything to horses, people? Yeah, uh, you could have easily done this movie where everyone is... A horse. A horse. And... You just change all the car jokes to to horse horse jokes. jokes. Yeah, it would have been the exact same. Like, there's still horses in human world, but vaguely horse-ish, sort of. But it still doesn't make sense um, on just the same level. Or humans... And then, actually, your world makes sense. Mm-hmm. It's humans that drive around cars. Or, like, yes, the main character is a race car, an actual a NASCAR race car driver. driver. <laughs> and his car is called Lightning McQueen. And he falls in love with this random chick that... Named Sally. Named Sally. Who drives a Porsche. It's like, you don't need these people. They like, don't need the, They don't need to be cars. There is zero reason for them to be cars. For a good example, like, and I don't know why they didn't go this route, considering this is a Disney short and stuff. They could have based this whole Cars concept Mm -hmm. um, on that, I think it's a 50s short film uh, by Disney, where it's 
the human race is is suing cars. Mm. And they're putting them on trial. Yes. Because cars cause so many accidents and they cause so many deaths and stuff like that. And this is a really interesting short. Um, if I can find a link to this short, I will put it in the description below so that people can watch it. Because it's something better to watch than these movies. Yeah, honestly. Oh, <laughs> and, obvious burn. <laughs> and then it has like a really clever twist at the end. I mean, yeah. it's not like super clever, but it's clever enough for being a, a short. And especially at the time, it was actually saying something. Yeah, and it's like... This, like, this has a point. Then, like, the cars are characterized and, like, have personalities and stuff. And it's like, this would not make sense if they were not cars. In the short. Yeah. It's like, that's important when you're changing, when, when you make a story and you're not making your characters human. There has to there be There has a to reason. be a reason. Like how a lot of animal-based movies where animals act like people, animals are usually used to be symbolic of some kind of people struggle, some kind of human struggle. Mm -hmm. Be it, you know, Fox and the Hound, how it deals with uh, uh, segregation race. and yeah. race, or obviously Zootopia. I mean, Zootopia is like the clearest example of this. Because it's very blatant about... Yeah, these animals are these animals for a very specific reason. Even something like um, Lady and the Tramp, where it kind mm -hmm. of talks about classism and... Purebreds versus mutts and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and, like, that's not really saying something, but it still uses it. It uses it As a to, visual shorthand yeah. to make you think something. Even something, and this is stretching a little bit, but, like, Robin Hood is still using the animal's... In a way, like, Robin Hood is a fox. Ha! He's sneaky. He's sneaky. The the kings are lions. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The poor people are usually like things like rabbits and turtles and chickens. Like... Common animals. Common farm animals and stuff. So, the the king's sneaky henchmen are, are a wolf and a snake. Like, that still is using the animal ideas Of, well. like, representing a particular kind of person or Of representing character. character traits. This, the only reason the cars are cars is to have tokenism jokes. Mm -hmm. Like, Lightning McQueen is a race car. Your dumb country bumpkin is a rusty old tow truck. It's like, there's not anything else you can do with that. Yeah. Because they're cars, and cars are bad, and <laughs> dumb, and stupid. And I wish cars didn't exist, both the movie and in real life. <laughs> let's, like, invent teleportation already. Come on, let's get on it, people. <laughs> chop, chop. Chop, chop. Uh, okay. God, um... we're, like, 35, 40 minutes into this review, and we're still on the first movie. <laughs> Well, okay, but this this covers a lot of what's just a problem with this con. Like, there's yes, just a big yes, problem yes. with this concept. Which is why both of the movies don't work. Both, though there's a lot of reasons why the second one is even worse. The second one doesn't take those things that were wrong with the first movie and into consideration it. at all. Yeah, it doesn't fix it. It just makes it worse in many ways. Anyways. Uh, my next note... Um, why are some cars sentient and others not? As in, like, why are the tractors cars, or uh, why are the tractors, tractors animals as compared to people? Or is that just like a cognition of the high class cars? I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, it's obviously something they just did for a joke, but like this joke. It bra raises too many questions in your universe. Yeah. What classifies. Um, a car, an automobile, as a person or an animal. Right. See, why is this is a big issue. Why is Bessie not alive? Is McQueen just, like, towing around this dead car to, like, fix the road? I don't know. I, I don't get it, movie. Uh... 
And then my, my final note isn't really like a note, but it's just kind of like a final statement of Cars takes itself too seriously to be taken seriously. Yeah. Because, and I've tried to, I've talked to you about this before. Mm -hmm. I think they could have gone this direction with it if they, they dumbed it down more, essentially. The whole movie was more jokey. Was either A, more jokey, or B, like, okay, A, first, first and foremost, the thing you really need to fix is you need to fix your story so that there's a reason for them to be cars. <laughs> yes. Like, that's a, that's a big thing. But secondly, like, okay, make it more like, like, you know how children's storybooks, like, you'll, you, you have a child storybook and it's just like, they're all butterflies for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And you don't really question it. Because, like, it's a children's novel and it's only trying to tell you, like, this really simple story. Yeah. About probably, hopefully, something related to butterflies. And that's what this should have been. Yeah, it should have been even more simple for just children. Which makes it bad for a different reason. <laughs> yeah. Which is also just bad. I don't think they could have won with this one. No. But somehow it's getting two well, sequels. And a spin-off movie, and which I think also and it's got a sequel. A t yeah, yeah. And like five hundred shorts. Yeah. God, Mater's Tall Tales has like merchandising, like 10 merchandising, shorts? merchandising. Oh my god! The so Larry the Cable Guy made bank off of this franchise. Uh yeah. Uh. And then everybody else involved in this franchise just like, God, now we're stuck. We're yep. stuck making these movies. I gotta, I gotta record lines for Pixar and, you know, like me the Queen line. I'm so done with this. Oh, man. Come on. I'm just so done being McQueen. Oh, God. Okay. So let's That's move the first on one. to Cars 2. God. So, Tanil, I have a question for you. <laughs> How far into the movie are we before we see the first dead car? <laughs> Not like, oh, they died off screen. No, like legitimate just dead car sitting on the screen. <laughs> Five minutes, like two minutes into the movie, there's a dead car, and then Fallen. from that, the body count just keeps going up and up and up. Like that opening scene has like probably at least twenty to thirty cars dead, yeah, if not more. Because there's it's a, a there's spy a scene movie where a car literally gets beat to death in a bathroom. Yeah. Because it's a spy movie. But we're cars still, so we're just exploding cars. Pixar, there's this thing called tone. Um, and normally you're really good at it. Um, and I love you, Pixar. But holy fuck, what was up with this movie? It's just so tone deaf. It was like nobody... Like, did you all just realize that you were stuck making this horrible movie and you're just like, well, fuck it. Let's make this as edgy as possible, but still People keep these. People are gonna die. Still still keep these stupidly cartoony. Insanely cartoony car designs. Which I think they amped up even. Yeah. Yeah, because the cars somehow look even more cheapified in this movie. And they move more. Like, Move their wheels can, more. like, just, like, extend wherever the fuck they want now. Oh, no, yeah, because Mater and McQueen gotta have, like, some insanely stupid secret best friend handshake thing. Again, that goes I on still like don't believe minute. this friendship for a hot second. Oh, God. And, uh, okay, Mater is the main character of this movie. Not McQueen. It's all about fucking 
Mater, who is okay. not an enjoyable character. Before we get before we get into this, I have something I need to say. Okay. People have not been harsh enough on this movie. Like <laughs> <laughs> Like, <laughs> I, th- this sucked. This was terrible. And I heard it was bad. Like, I've heard people tell me it was bad. But uh, I was always just kind of like, okay, but Pixar doesn't make bad movies. So it's probably just like, uh-huh. not good. But see, the thing is, is people were always just telling me it's bad because they're like, oh, it's a it's a kitty movie. And I was like, well, okay. I mean, that's kind of disappointing, but that doesn't make the movie bad. No, no, this is not a kitty movie. This is just a bad movie. Get your terminology right, you guys, and call it out for what it is. This movie sucks, and it's a bad movie, and you should feel bad. For all, like, three people that like this movie, you're wrong. (laughs) You're wrong! (laughs) (laughs) It's cartoony cars running around fucking killing each other, but not in, like... Not in a cartoony fun kind of way. Yeah, not even, like, in a, like, ooh, we're fun cartoon animals killing each other like Happy Tree Friends, which is supposed to be tonally deaf. Yeah. This doesn't realize it's tonally deaf. Yeah, no. It thinks it's doing the right thing. And it's just not. Like, these... Like, it gets all brutal, like a real Pixar movie and stuff like that. But it's just like, it's cars. It's cars. Cartoony, fun, and silly, Mater, stupid cars. And Mater is there witnessing all this horrific stuff, but he's... T- Who's stupid to understand anything that's going on? He doesn't understand that people are dying around him. Yeah. Like So he's just like not cracking jokes because all Mater's jokes are more You mean all of Mater's lines are just jokes? All of Mater's lines are jokes, but they're not jokes that he's making. They're jokes that it's like, ha, he's an idiot. Yeah. That's all of his dialogue for the entire movie. He's not intentionally trying to make you laugh. Which just makes me groan. It's just... I hate him. I hate... I hate Mater. Uh, Mater... Yeah, and they try and make, like, McQueen the bad guy in this film. Or, like, make it so that McQueen is an asshole again for one scene... And he's supposed to be the wrong person in that situation, but he's not. He's a he's a professional like athlete in this universe, and his best friend is yelling at him in his headset during the race, which fucks him up and makes him lose. But we're supposed to feel like McQueen is a bad guy because McQueen should know Mater is an idiot and just let him be one. No! <laughs> No, he's being an idiot, and he, you're taking Mater to all these foreign countries, and he's making a scene and being an asshole. Just because he doesn't know he's being an asshole doesn't mean he's not being an asshole. And you need to tell, let him know, dude, tone it down. You're being super culturally insensitive all the fucking time. Stop. Yeah. Seriously, please just go home. Stop being such an American tourist that all the other countries legitimately hate. I hate you. I hate you. Needless to say, I don't think um, we're the target demographic for these movies. No. Get out of Japan, Cars 2. I don't appreciate it. I don't appreciate it. I don't appreciate them in Europe either. I don't appreciate you you much. mocking other countries at all. Yeah. I know you're trying to be loving to these other countries, but it just comes off as naively mocking. Yeah. Like, you don't realize you're not being... Yeah, because great. Mater is being thrown in these situations, it's, it's supposed to be... You're supposed to be... to be laughing at him being dumb in all these other countries' situations, but it comes off... Because 
You're supposed to relate. Because Mater is charismatic enough that you relate to him. And you're supposed to relate to him, which means instead of laughing at him being stupid in all these situations, you're laughing at all these weird, absurd things that he's getting stuck into. Which, in these different countries. In these different countries, which means you're sympathizing with the dumb, stupid guy and think he's in the right. Yeah. And this country is obviously in the wrong I mean, because not, Mater not can't really, be but, right. But still, it's like, it, it just comes off as like, it, it doesn't, they're not good jokes. They're not good jokes that feel bad and the why? Squinty-eyed. Oh, there's, yeah, there's a God, Japanese character. just more character tokenism that, everywhere. Just like a squinty-eyed sushi man. Yeah. Why is he squinty-eyed? He's got giant eyes. Yeah. That Everybody is in racist. this universe has giant eyes. Although, well, since we're talking about eyes, that fucking car that showed up who oh, randomly yeah. has its eyes and its headlights. As compared to up on the windshield where all the other cars have their eyes. That was horrifying, and I never want to see that again. <laughs> I mean, I never want to watch this movie again. Mm -hmm. But, God, that was unsettling. We... we, we we're reviewing it now, so we never have to watch that one again. Yeah. Thank God. Oh. It's not good. Also, By the way, the only note I have for Cars 2 is, what the fuck is going on? I just thought I'd share that for everyone. <laughs> That's the only note I took. <laughs> the, the plot is complete bullshit. The racing is only there to further the plot. It's only there as and a... And never gets really resolved. Nope, never resolved. It just kind of... We're racing because we're a Cars movie, so we have to race because that's what we do, right? Yeah. We can't just be a spy film like we so desperately want to be for some reason. We have to have racing in this. Why is this a spy film? I don't know. Why is this a spy You're film? You're Cars. You don't do spies. You do... Bad racing movies. All the spy stuff was just so dumb. Like, we were a minute into the movie, and McMissile has, like, he's done all these spy things. And I'm just like, Suction cup wheels. What is going on? Suction cup or magnetic wheels and five cars, grappling hooks. Cars, stop. Look at yourself. You can't do this. Machine guns. <laughs> Landmines turning into boats. It like is swinging. The car is swinging through the air. What is going on? You can't do this. And then another car just turns into a jet. Yeah. Because why not? They're a spy. They can do that with the shittiest little wings ever. I also want to point out, I remember this from what, from the beginning of the film. There was some, like, boat animation where the boats are... are Spitting really fast spitting for as large as they are. Yeah, it's like they're these huge boats. And they turn on the dime. But, like, their animation is just, like, they're moving around. Like, they're a car on the road, just like... Bloop, 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 bloop. And I'm like, okay, maybe it's my own ignorance and I don't realize how fast these big boats can move, but that just feels wrong. Yeah, it's a large watercraft i don't think well for one that it can turn on a dime and just immediately be facing the other direction and two i don't think it can do that in like two seconds yeah at the speed it was moving because it comes up at like a basic pace and then just whoop and it's turned around now if it was like charging like hauling ass and then just like Torked it and turned around. Sure, but it doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. God, I'm oh. just having flashbacks of when we were watching the beginning of. The, I'm having flashbacks. This is how bad this. Is. We I, just watched it. I know. I'm having flashbacks <laughs> when we started the movie, and it's McMissile like hanging off the boat. Uh huh. And I just remember turning to you and just being like, like, like that, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. We were a minute into the movie and I was like, done. <laughs> no, you can't do this. But I just turned to you and I was like, Sean, what is on the screen right now? 
And I just turn to her and I say, oh, just wait. No! Because I had seen this movie before and I knew how stupid it is. I wasn't prepared. I was not prepared. No, you weren't. It's like, I think this is legitimately the most underprepared you've been for any animated film ever. Yeah. I just... You severely I, were, like, you were not compensating for how stupid this film could be. No. It was glorious watching you have to watch this, but then I had to watch it too again, so it wasn't as great. It's so fucking bad. I just, I can't. <laughs> I can't believe they're making a third movie. Yeah, you're like, I. this is why I've been baffled about you wanting to go see n number three. And I'm just sitting here having seen number two. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, no, the second one was terrible. And obviously they realized it was terrible because they're just doing the first movie again, except now McQueen is the king. Uh-huh. Getting ready to retire and just needs to win one more race. And new McQueen gray new car whatever his name is is gonna come in and be an asshole until the end of the movie where they make up or something because it's the first movie except he's the other character and now we got sally 3.0 yeah sally 3.0 i don't even know if sally 1.0 is even gonna be in the new movie <laughs> she hasn't shown up in the trailers it's just this new yellow car i hope the voice actress was just like no i am done these movies are too stupid my character is nothing no get someone else. God, it also makes me so mad that all the female cars in this universe Are have just... to have lips and eyelashes. Yeah. It's like, come on, fuck off, please. With that, oh. It's bad. It's, it's so bad. I still kind of am looking forward to Cars 3. <laughs> And you're like, I can't wait to see McQueen eat shit. And I'm like, what do you... At that point, I didn't realize you hadn't seen the second movie. McQueen's such a boring character in the second movie. McQueen isn't a character in He's the second movie. He's not a character. He's the non-existent character that he became at the end of the first movie, except cut the character in half. I only... See, I only really remembered him being an asshole in the first movie. So yeah. I was like, yes, the queen's gonna eat shit. This will be great. But No, he becomes no, a he nothing. Is, if he's a nothing in the... Like, if he's, like, the same kind of nothing guy at the beginning of Cars 3, like, that's gonna be so disappointing. Uh, like, like, during Cars 2... Francesco is obviously trying to like just shit talk and like like they're just like supposed to be having fun and like mm -hmm. having a little back and forth and McQueen has the gall to act as though he like has, has complete amnesia of the first movie where he was an asshole and he's like oh, why is Francesco being so mean to me what an ass what an asshole when one McQueen did that all the time in the first movie two all, pretty much half the other racers did that in the first movie. Yeah, it's like everybody was shit-talking each other. Because that's what you do. Except for the king, who was, like, grown up past that. But McQueen's not grown up past that. You're still a young, upstart guy, even though you've won... Oh, my God. you won four Piston Cups. Thank you. I needed to know that McQueen surpassed Doc and became off a better racer. Off-screen. Off-screen. <laughs> also, did you notice that all the other countries in their big old race tried not to invite America? Hmm? In their in their big old race in Cars 2, there was mm -hmm. a car for like every single country. Yeah. Every single country, as in like the countries that everybody knows. Yeah. Except like for five America. Countries. It's like, technically, they held out a hand to, like, hey, McQueen, we're going to join in this thing. He's like, nah. And then they just dropped it. They're like, God, thank goodness. Stupid Americans aren't going to be involved in our <laughs> shit. <laughs> but then Mater has to just bullshit. And then, oh, we're in again because yeah. uh, 
We can't well, have conflict. Okay. Like, essentially, the only reason that they did that story-wise was to establish that Mater is going to be the main character. Like, Mater yeah. has to be the one to to push the plot forward. Which means uh, McQueen can have no character. Yeah. Oh, and don't even get me started on the bullshit ending how how they have Mater and the agent cars tied up. Mm-hmm. Oh. Tied up, and they're like, we put a bomb in McQueen's pit so that when he goes to for a pit stop, he's gonna blow up. Ha 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 ha. And then they drive away, and then Mater gets free through bullshit because they didn't remove his spy gear. Yeah. And it turns out, oh, he has the bomb the whole time. Why yeah, does yeah, he so have Mater the bomb? Gets to the pit, and then they're like, what if Mater they was... knew you would escape, Mater, and try to help McQueen. So, <laughs> so they put the bomb on you. Really? Really? You think Mater... You could have set that up so much better with them, like, because Mater is an idiot, you could have just set it up so that they let Mater go. He's like, and then McQueen, you're not and then a real he, spy. You, we don't need you. Right. You can't. It's like nobody's going to believe you anyway because you're such an idiot, which there. which is true. Like, the movie has shown that numerous times that people don't believe Mater because he's an idiot. So then they could have just let him go, and he could have had the bomb strapped to him that way. And then he walks up to McQueen, and everyone dies, and everyone's happy. <laughs> everyone's happy. But no, like, instead... They they do it in the in the way that just feels the most contrived. Yep. I'm so disappointed. So, on an unrelated note, mm -hmm. about this movie, Back to the Universe makes no sense. Yeah. There's a lot to talk about there. So. Uh huh. So. The villain of the movie. Oh, yeah. Pretends to become a uh, green car. Yeah. Like, a solar By the powered way, it's and shit. such a shame that, like, this green energy message is put in such a stupid movie. Yeah. Going on, though. Yeah, he becomes a green energy car by putting mm -hmm. solar power nozzles all over himself. Except that's not true. Mm hmm But you're supposed to believe that it is true throughout the entire movie. So it took a billionaire to have major surgery, essentially, in this universe, to become fuel efficient. And then he's like, here, everybody start using this different fuel that is not for your tanks. All of you race cars that are used to using gasoline. Also, just... fuck you, Fillmore. If you knew that his gasoline was bullshit, why didn't you tell anyone? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's an asshole. And Sarge, because Sarge knew too. Yeah. Both of you, bad. Bad movie. If you think something is wrong, tell your friends. Get you know, out of cars there. are actually dying, but whatever. No, just don't tell anyone. At least you saved McQueen. Yeah, that's fine. Who cares about all those other random racers that might be crippling? Like, be crippled crip now. Crippled for the rest of their lives. They can't do the thing that they love and or are built for. Mm -hmm. But whatever, you see. I was McQueen. waiting for, like... Either Francesco to be the main villain for some reason I don't know because the movie has a hate boner towards Francesco, or um, like for him to die, or something because uh -huh. like I, I mean he just he should have some kind of arc. He had no he's arc. He's a major move. Like he's a major character in the movie. Yeah, he has no arc. He has no arc. There's like there, nothing happens to him. Nothing. His character arc is a line. Yeah. Like he, he seriously doesn't fucking change. The whole time. Even at the end of the movie, he's still just the same guy. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, you were going on about the villain. But, like, shoving 
It's like, I don't know that much about cars, but I'm pretty sure if you have, but I, I know enough that if you have a vehicle that specific, specifically needs something like unleaded or diesel fuel, if you put something else in there, it will seriously fuck up the machine, possibly ruining it. Right. So shoving this new all-in-all oil mm-hmm. into your vehicle or your body should shouldn't it kill you unless you have assumingly expensive surgery to change out your entire stomach system? Right, which is what like what he gu- does. What the guy does to become a solar car in the first place. But none of the other racers have to do it. Yeah, it's like what you're not setting up the rules of this universe. You're breaking them in the same fucking sentence. Mm-hmm. Why should I care? Oh, it's so dumb. And why is it all the shitty old cars they are like, fuck cars that work correctly when we can just have surgery to make ourselves work correctly? Yeah. If that's a thing that actually exists in this world. Yeah, they're all supposed to be like these really rich... Rich except all the rich mafia cars that are all like shitty... Clunkers. Co- old shitty clunkers or lemons that don't work correctly. Mm-hmm. How? Should you all be like... Out of money? Well, and like the movie tried to propose some explanation to it when they had, like, the tow truck there. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, he's a clunker as, like, a status symbol so that, like, a tow truck has to carry him around everywhere. Like, that's the vibe I was getting with that. No, I think it's more so he's made his way to the top of the family, so because he's a car that breaks down all the time, instead of having to actually run himself to the point where he'll break down because he breaks down easily, he relaxes and just has someone pull him around instead. Because he can afford that. Mm-hmm. That's what I got out of it. Okay. But, I mean, your cars, you could fix yourselves up. Theoretically. Yet again, because you never had that scene in Cars 1 where you established that you can just put another, like, someone's engine into another car and it'll work uh-huh. just fine. Like, <sighs> there's just too many questions. There's too many questions about this universe. It's not a good film. Surprising no one. Oh. So, yeah. Do you have any more thoughts on I do. There was, something, uh, there was something I was thinking about while you were talking about the bad guy. Um, Mr. Badgie? Eddie mm-hmm. Izzard? Yeah. Eddie Izzard, stop playing bad characters. God, Michael Caine was in this movie, too. I'm so sorry. Master Wine. I hope... He's rolling in his grave. He's not dead. He's still rolling in his grave. <laughs> um. God, I hope none of these Cars 2 characters are back in Cars 3. I highly doubt it. I don't even think half the cast from Cars oh, is going to be back from the trailers. Yeah. It's like, I don't know if Sally is going to be back in Cars 3. Because she doesn't show up in the trailers. Yeah, that's something we'll have to watch for in Cars 3. How many of the background characters from the first movie actually speak lines? Because it's been so long. Mm-hmm. You're better than this, Pixar. Even Brave and, and Monsters University are better than this. They're way better than this. Oh, yeah. They're way better They're than this. They're miles ahead of this. Yeah. That being said, we haven't seen The Good Dinosaur. True. I keep forgetting The Good Dinosaur is... Good Dinosaur is a Pixar movie. Or that it exists. Or that it exists at all. That, the Good Dinosaur, though, I can at least forgive because I heard that the production on that movie was hell. Okay. Yeah. So, like, things happen. I, I understand that. Cars, though? Cars is, like, no excuse. It's just there to make money, and Pixar, you could have tried. You could have made these movies good, but you decided not to. You decided to go with, like, the least common denominator and just... I mean, it's a movie for country bumpkins who like cars. But also like spy films, apparently. 
are just supposed to be but expanding do they, the horizon. Do they like spy films? That's the other thing that uh, that that was that was something that I was thinking about too. Is okay. Why a spy film? Especially considering this movie is just out there to make money. Uh huh. So the spy film angle must just be targeted towards the kids. But kids aren't really into spy movies right now, are they? Or were back then? Like, spy movies weren't big, big at that time, were they? I don't they? think so, no. I don't think so either. It It's baffling, whatever it is. I mean, maybe Pixar is just, like, wanting to fill a hole there? Or maybe somebody was just like, I really want to make a spy film. And they're like, okay, well, I mean, we're working on Cars too, so... <laughs> We'll do that together. And the person's like, uh, 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 car, uh, uh, cars? Um, okay. I think I can make this work. Doesn't make it work at all. Gets fired. <laughs> Gets fired. <laughs> Never works in animation again. <laughs> works at DreamWorks. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> works at Illumination. Oh, no. <laughs> Goes then on to make Despicable Me 3. <laughs> and truly does quit. <laughs> oh, God. So. Speaking of Despicable Me 3. Okay. I, I think we can wrap up our, our Cars talk now, right? Yeah, I think that's I, probably reasonable. I, I mean, I already yelled and screamed a lot, but I think the only thing I have left is yelling and screaming. So. <gasps> oh, my God. What? So, next week. We're obviously going to be watching and reviewing Cars 3. Yeah. But then the week after that, we're planning on watching and reviewing Despicable Me 1 and 2. Which, which is the very same situation. Which is the exact same situation because we've both seen the first. I saw the second one in theaters and you have not. Yes, I've not seen the second one. You have no idea. <laughs> You're in for the same situation except done by Illumination. <laughs> It's going to be grand. <laughs> Why? I don't want it. I don't want it. See you all over the next few weeks for even more car reviews. No.